All right, this is part four, the final episode in our GIMP scripting tutorial series. And so as this is the last part, our goal today is to finish writing our script, which generates random splatter brushes. So in part three, we started this script, which creates a brand new blank 400 by 400 canvas like this, or whatever size the user enters. The next step, which we still need to do in today's video, is to figure out how to make the script paint around our canvas with random black sparks shapes like this. And then once we've done that, we already have from our second part of this series, this tool which we've made, which is in the colors menu, smooth threshold. If we apply that to it, it would turn it into our final splatter design for this brush. So the only piece that we still need to do is to figure out how to get from a blank canvas to something like this inside of the script. So we can do that pretty easily uh, by hand by painting around with a sparks brush and just turning it all black. But to do that in a script is a little trickier. So that's what we're going to do today is to figure out how to accomplish that inside of a script. Okay, so let's recall how we did this painting step in the original splatter brush tutorial that I made a long time ago. So we used our paintbrush tool. We selected the sparks brush. And we can also reset the size of the Sparks brush to its default size of 60 pixels. The Sparks brush has this yellow color automatically assigned to it, so it completely ignores whatever colors you have for your foreground and background colors here, and it will always use this yellow color. And so what we did was we painted around some random design like that on our canvas, and then we turned it black using a, a, some other tricks. We're actually going to do it a little bit different way in this video, because it's going to be easier for writing the script. Even though the Sparks brush by default is always going to use this yellow color, we can actually trick it into using black by doing this. If we change this brush dynamics down here to random color, no matter what brush you have, it will force it to use random colors between your foreground and background colors. So right now these are black and white, so I paint around. It will use black and white and shades of gray in between randomly as I paint. So we don't want that though, all we want is just black, so if we put both our foreground and background colors to black, then it will only use random colors between black and black, so therefore the only option is to use black, and so we get this solid black sparks shaped like that. That's how we can make it the right color, but we still have to figure out how do we actually paint on the canvas within a script. We don't want the person to have to paint around themselves, we want it to do it automatically. So how do we do this inside of a script? Well, let's look in our procedure browser and see how painting is done within script foo. So we can search for the paint brush here. And we see we have this command get paint brush default. The way this works is that you have to basically input an array, which is essentially a list of all the coordinates that you want to paint on. So you have some X and Y coordinate for the first point, some X and Y coordinate for the second point, etc. and then eventually you have your last x and y coordinate for your nth point, however many points you choose to use. So this tells us that the paintbrush tool draws linearly interpolated lines through the specified stroke coordinates. So what does that mean? Well that's telling us that we basically give it a list of points and it will just draw straight lines between those points like this. That's all we can do with the paintbrush command in script view. We can basically only draw straight lines if you're wondering how I'm drawing straight lines, you just click once, hold down shift, click again, and it will automatically draw a straight line between those. Keep holding down shift, click again, click again, click again. This is basically what our script is going to do. We're going to tell it a bunch of points, and it's going to draw straight lines between them. And so the goal is, if we tell it to do a bunch of random points, then it should get some sort of random splattery shape like this even though right now it doesn't look completely random because it has a very linear design to it. We can increase the spacing of our Sparks brush in our Brushes dialog, which you could access if you don't have it open already by going to Windows, Dockle Dialogs, Brushes, or Shift Control B. We can increase the spacing to something like 50 maybe, or 40, and if we do that, then when we paint around, the lines are a little bit more spaced out, so we don't get quite as obvious of a linear pattern when we do this process. So this is the idea of how we're going to paint around randomly on our canvas. We need to basically fill up an array with a bunch of random coordinates, and then we're going to tell GIMP to paint that list of coordinates by drawing lines between them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and return to our splatter.scm file that we've been working on in the previous parts of this video series. And what I've gone ahead and done right here is I've pasted in the next few commands that we need. 
This is in our script view splatter brush function that we started in the previous part of this series, part three. And I'll go ahead and paste this in above the GIMP display new image command. We want to keep this part at the very end so that GIMP doesn't display the new image until after we've done uh, processing the rest of the things we need to do. These commands, all they do is set the different settings that we just discussed previously that we need in order to paint correctly. So it puts both the foreground and background colors to black in case the user had them set to something else. It sets the brush dynamics down here to the uh, random color option and it sets the brush opacity, make sure that's 100, and make sure the brush is the Sparks brush. So you should go ahead and go into your procedure browser and look up each of these commands if you want a little bit more information about them. Just a real quick reminder, I think we mentioned this in maybe the first part of the series. This is a little uh, list which defines a color in GIMP. So these three numbers represent the red, green, and blue components of the color. So if they're all three set to zero, then that means the color black. Okay, the next thing we need to do is set up the array for our paintbrush tool here. We can make this as long as we want. So, for example, we could paint through 100 points, 50 points, 20 points, whatever we want. That's what this N represents here. So we would like to allow the user to enter that value themselves so they can have some control over how many splatter bits are in their brush. What we can go ahead and do is we can add a new variable to the definition of our function right here. So we already allowed them to choose the size of their brush, the canvas size. We could also allow them to choose the number of points that will be used um, for the paintbrush tool. So I just call this num points. So in order to make this work, remember we need to add another entry to our script view register command down here. We have two of them here. Make sure you choose the one for our splatter brush script, not the smooth threshold script. We already have this SF adjustment definition for this brush size variable. We could copy that and reuse that for our number of points variable. So remember this thing right here is a label for our variable. If we just called this something like number of points, the user who's running the script wouldn't really know what that means. So it makes more sense probably to name this label something that is a little more meaningful to the user in terms of what it actually does. So again, this is determining the number of points that our paintbrush uses to paint on the canvas. So then the higher number of points we use, the more painting will be done. So the more dense or busier our splatter brush will be on the canvas. So in other words, we could say basically the higher this number is, that determines the amount of splatter on our canvas. So it makes a little bit more sense to call this variable when it pops up in the window for the user to enter the value. It makes a little more sense to call this something like uh, splatter amount, which is what I chose to name it. We could change these default values. Um, I think I'll use the default value of 20. Um, smallest value has to have at least one point to paint and I don't think we really need more than 200 but you could try changing different values here if you want. So now the user has two values they can change the size of their brush and the amount of splatter appearing on their brush and that will be saved in our number of points variable right here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure this number of points is an integer. What we can do is inside of our let command right here we can add a new variable basically we're just going to redefine the same variable num points and we're just going to define that new variable which is really the same as that variable to be the rounded off version of this value up here so we can use this command called round and just put our num points variable in there so this will round off whatever that value was to an integer and it will store it back into this variable num points so now we've guaranteed that it really is an integer so the next thing we need to do is remember this array of stroke points right here. This is really twice as long as the number of points that we have. For each point, for stroke point one here, we have an X and a Y coordinate. And then we have an X and a Y coordinate for stroke point two right there. So the number of values in this array is actually two times the number of points. For each point, we have two values, the X and Y coordinates. So we need to define a new array which is twice as long as the number of points that the user entered. So we can first define a new variable, which will just be two times whatever that number of points is. And this will be the length of our array. So we can call it array length. And this is just going to be two times that number of points. So next we're going to actually go ahead and define the array itself. So let's name this variable, say, 
uh, points array, because it will be an array containing all of the points that we're going to stroke through with the paintbrush tool. And in order to define a new array to save into this variable, remember we use this um, function called cons array, which constructs an array. And we have to tell it how long we want the array to be, so we're going to make it as long as that value that we just defined, array length. And we want it to store numbers, so we just say, we put this command double with an apostrophe in front of it to tell it that we want it to be an array that stores numbers. Close off the cons array function, close off the definition of our points array variable. So right now we have something like this. We've just created this array structure inside of our script, but it's not holding any information. We can visualize it like this. It's just kind of a list of these cells, which are each places that we can store information. And each cell has an index, which we use to refer to it by. So the first position really starts at 0 instead of 1. If we had 5 points, our array would be 10 units long, because remember it was 2 times the number of points. And then it would start from 0 and end at 9. Because we're starting at 0, the last index would actually be 1 less than the number of spaces right here. So right now we have this blank empty array. We want to basically put in the x and y coordinates for each of our points, which we're going to stroke through with our paintbrush tool. Each one of these is going to be a random number, which will represent the coordinates of a point on the canvas for the paintbrush to stroke through. So how do we fill this array in with random points? We have to actually use some sort of looping structure to go through and define each entry of our array depending on the number of points the user entered. So we're going to use another new command in script foo that we haven't used previously, and this will be the while statement. So first of all, we need another variable to work with, which is going to represent the index that we're currently working on as we loop through each position of our array. So first, the index value is going to start at 0, and we're going to put a value in here, and it's going to go to 1. We're going to put a value in there, it's going to go to 2, and so on. And each time the, the index value increases, we're going to store a new random number into that position of our array. So we need to go back to our array and define another new variable up here in our let statement. And we can just call this index. And we're going to start out with a value of 0, because that's the first position of our array. And now we can come down here, and we're going to use the while statement, as I mentioned, to define each of these values in our array one after the other. So how we do this is we just say while and we have to put some condition here and then as long as that condition is true then this statement will keep looping back and forth every time it gets to the end it will come back up and check whether this condition is true and then it will repeat the process until that condition is no longer true. So the condition that we need to satisfy is that we only want to keep going as long as our index is less than the number of points in our array, or in other words, our, the length of our array. So if this array is 10 units long and the index value is starting at 0, we want to keep going as long as the index value is less than 10. But once it gets to 10, that will mean we're done and we want to stop looping. So we can say while our index is less than the array length, and then this is our condition that has to be satisfied in order for us to continue. And then the next thing, we will put some commands right here to do inside of our while statement. And after we do the commands, then we're going to update our index value by using the set command, which we mentioned in the first video, to redefine our index variable to be the same thing that it was plus 1. If you're brand new to this, it might seem a little confusing. The idea is index starts at 0. If index is less than the length of our array, then it's going to come down here and do whatever command we write in here next. And then it's going to increase the index by 1. So now the index was at 0. We've added 1 to it. Now it's 1. 1 is still less than 10, so it does the next command. Then it increases it to 2. 2 is still less than 10, so it does the next command, and so on, until eventually the index is 9, which is still less than 10, so it does that command. And then the index is 10, which is no longer less than 10, so it stops there and does the rest of our script after that. So for each index value, all we need to do is set that entry in the array to some random number. And we can do that using our a set command, which we talked about in the very first video in this series. So all we need to tell it is the array that we want to work with, which is our whoops, points array. We need to tell it what index position to set. Well, that's just the index value that we're currently using. And then we can just tell it what value to plug into that space in the array. So it's going to be some sort of random number. Remember, we talked about the random number generator in the first video as well. And remember, random, you have to put some other number here. 
for example, I could say size, which is the size of my canvas, and now random would give me some random number between zero and the size of my canvas. This isn't quite what we want though, but let's leave it like that for the moment and talk about how we can make this work a little bit better. Each of the values in an array is going to be a random x or y coordinate for a point on this canvas. So you can see when I move my cursor around, there are these little arrows on these uh, rulers on the top and bottom of the GIMP screen here, which move around to follow my cursor. So each point has an x coordinate, which is what we have left or right on the ruler up here at the top, and a y coordinate, which is determined by its height over here on this ruler on the left. You can see that on the left, we start at zero at the top, and it increases as we go to the bottom. And then on the top, we start at zero on the left, and increases as we go towards the right. As the script is written right now, random size would give us a random number between zero and the size of our canvas, which in this case is 400. The one downside of this is if we used our Sparks brush, and if, um, if that random number that we picked happened to be, say, zero, and we had like a zero x coordinate, then it would be painting a spark right here on the edge of our canvas. And then that would give us some splatters which are like half cut off of our brush. So we would like to try to make it so that none of our splatters can get that close to the edge. So we only want to pick X and Y coordinates inside an area like this. And that way even if our point happens to be right on the edge, that little spot will still be inside of our canvas. You could choose different values here, but I chose to start this 20 pixels over and 20 pixels down. I want a random number between 20 and size minus 20 for an X coordinate. I want it to be between 20 and size minus 20 for the Y coordinate. So we can see this a little bit more nicely here. I want a random number that's between 20 and whatever the size was minus 20. However, remember that random function only gives us value starting at zero up to some maximum value. So we can't start it at 20 like this, at least not directly, but we can get around that by using this trick. We could first find a random number between zero and size minus 40. Now this will give us a random value between there and there, and after we have that random value, if we simply add 20 back to it, that will give us a random value between 20 and size minus 20, which is what we really want. So we actually want to change what this says right here. We don't want a random number between zero and size. We want a random number between zero and size minus 40. So minus size 40. And after we pick the random number between zero and size minus 40, then we want to add 20 back to it to get it up to where we want. So we want to add 20 to this random number. So first we subtracted 40, found a random number between 0 and that, and then shifted it up by 20 to get it in the correct interval that we want. And then we took that random number, stored it into our points array at the position indicated by this index value, which is increasing by 1 every time. So this goes through every single position in our array and puts a random number in it. Starts at 0, adds it up to 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to the size of our array, and each position of the array gets filled with a random number like this. Okay, so that was actually probably the hardest part of the whole script. Now that we have our points array set up containing all of our random x and y coordinates for the points that we're going to stroke through with our paintbrush, now it's time to actually go ahead and apply the paintbrush command to stroke through all those points on our canvas as we wanted it to. So let's go back to our procedure browser, remember the syntax for this. This was our paintbrush command here, GIMP paintbrush default. All we need to do is tell it what layer or what drawable to work on, the number of strokes, which is the length of our array, and then we need to pass to it the array of points that we're going to stroke through. So all we need to do is say GIMP paintbrush default. The layer that we're going to work on was the layer that we defined in the previous video up here. The number of strokes, this was the total length of that array, so that's our array length variable. And then the strokes itself is the points array that we defined which contains all of our x and y coordinates. So the actual command to do the painting is fairly simple, it's just this one line, but in order to set up this points array we had to do all this extra stuff here with the while statement and these different variables. 
And now that we've done the painting, the last step is to apply the smooth threshold filter, which we did all the way back in uh, second video, I believe. We can use that script within our new script just by simply calling the name of our smooth threshold command here. If we just call the function script foo smooth threshold, we can use it inside of our second script by just calling the name of it. And remember, we had a few arguments we need to put into it. We need to tell it what image, layer, and threshold value to use. So we can work on the image and layer that we just created in the third video, actually. Threshold value, however, we haven't done yet. So just like we did for the script, the first smooth threshold script, we wanted the user to be able to enter this threshold value, and we would like them to still be able to enter that value inside of our splatter bus script as well. So we need another variable, one last variable for the user to enter for the script. So we already have the size of the brush, the number of points. We can have another variable, which um, we can just call threshold here. And then remember, we need to add that to our script through register again. So we could say copy this here. So this time it's going to be a threshold value. But remember what this threshold value really does when you're uh, applying the smooth threshold to the fuzzy black sparks brush layer. The threshold value determines how much of the fuzzy gray stuff from the sparks brush, how much of that is turned into black and how much is turned into white. So really this threshold value is determining the size of our splatters. So it makes more sense to label this variable something like splatter size. Because that's what the threshold value is really doing. It's determining how big or small the splatters are. And again, we have these default and min and max values to pick. So for the threshold value, remember, it could be something between 0 and 255. And the default value is right in the middle, which was 127. So now that we have that variable registered with our script passed into our function here, we can use that threshold value in our smooth threshold function call right here. Threshold. And that's basically it for the script. I mean, this does the entire random brush generating process. There's a couple extra little things that we can add though, but first let's try this out and make sure that it works. So if we do control S to save it, we can come back to GIMP and do filters, script foo, refresh scripts. And now if I go to File, Create, Splatter Brush, we get all these three values that we chose, our brush size, splatter amount, and splatter size, which we just did. Let's just use the default values. If I click OK, it creates that random splatter brush just like that. And that's really it for the script. So the last couple things that I was mentioning, though, are you can see if I press Control Z right now, it's just going to undo each of those steps at once. And it even undoes that step at the very beginning of our splatter brush script where we had to insert that layer into the image. When a person runs a script and creates a splatter brush, it doesn't really make sense to allow them to undo all the steps. Since that whole thing was created kind of all as one process, they shouldn't be able to undo each piece individually. So we talked about this in the smooth threshold script where we grouped all the commands into one undo operation so that pressing undo once undid all of them instead of just one individual piece. Similarly to that, when you're creating a brand new image and filling it with some object like we did here with a splatter brush, it doesn't really make sense to let them undo it at all, right? If a person creates the splatter brush and then modifies it somehow by maybe going to colors invert or doing something else to it, if they press control Z a bunch of times, they wouldn't expect it to undo everything. They would just expect it to go back to the way the brush originally looked when they first created it. So we should actually turn off the undo settings entirely when we first create a brand new image like this. So we can do that by coming back to the beginning of our splatter brush script and we can put in a new command called gimp image undo disable. And this will turn off the undo settings for this new image. We have to tell it what image to, to do that to. So we're going to do it to the image that we just created in the script. This will actually completely turn off the undo and we can turn it back on at the very end of our script. Let's say um, right before we just we'll keep the display command at the very end. We can say gimp image undo enable. And you can look up both of these commands in the procedure browser if you want to read more about them. But we can turn off the undo and turn it back on to the very end of our script. And that way the person, when they run the script, they won't be able to undo any of these settings. So if I save this now, I can go back to filters, script foo, refresh scripts. And then if I do file create splatter brush, 
If I press Ctrl Z now, nothing happens. If I do some other things to the image, now if I press Ctrl Z a bunch of times, it only goes back to the way the brush originally looked and it won't undo any more of the operations. Now the last thing that we can also add to our script is you notice if I change these foreground and background colors to something else, and if I picked a different brush, if I was working on something and had a different brush out like this, if I run my splatter brush script, it will change all those settings. Remember we had to change the foreground and background colors to black, we changed the brush to sparks brush. But now that the script's done, there's no need to keep those settings anymore. It would be nice if the script reverted back to the settings that the person had previously so that they can keep using that same brush and same foreground and background colors that they were using. So we can fix that by again going back to our script and we can add another command at the beginning and end which are called GIMP context push and GIMP context pop. So if you've done much programming before, you probably already know something about stacks and queues and that sort of thing. If you don't know anything about that stuff, you don't really need to worry about too much, but basically all you need to know is that GIMP context push tells GIMP to start a new group of settings for your like your foreground colors and your brushes and stuff. And when you pop, it takes away those that new group of settings and reverts back to the original settings that you had. So I press Control S to save this now. We can test this out if I change the foreground color to something else again, change the brush to something else, and if I can even change the dynamics to something else, then I can run the script. Oops, I have to refresh it first. Filters, script foo, fresh scripts. Now I can run the script, file create, spider brush. And it would create the splatter brush the same way, which required it to change all the settings. But you can see it looks like my settings didn't change at all. It's because the settings only changed while the script was working, and as soon as it was done, it went back to the same settings that we started with. Okay, and just one last thing that I wanted to mention. If you remember way back at the beginning of this video when I was talking about painting around with the sparks brush and stuff, um, we changed the spacing up to a higher value like this. We actually needed that inside of our script as well, but we changed all these values inside of our script. None of them were the spacing for the brush. There actually is a command, if you look up in the procedure browser, if you search for spacing, there is a command to change the spacing of a brush, but it doesn't work if you're using one of the default built-in brushes, like this Sparks brush. This value starts out at something like 15, and it would be nice inside of the script to force that to be a value like maybe 40, or it would even be better to put that as another parameter that the user can enter when they run your script because changing the spacing also affects how much splatter and how dense the splatter is in your brush. So it would be nice for the user to be able to change that inside of the script, but unfortunately we can. There's no way to change the spacing for one of these default brushes like that. So in order to use a script, you're going to have to just change those settings manually here like this and then run the script after you've changed those settings. If you increase the spacing a lot, you can see the brush gets a little more sparse like this. There's not as many splatters. So that's when you might want to try increasing the splatter amount to compensate for that. Something like this. We get a nice looking splatter like that. And that is it for this splatter brush script tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed this series of videos um, about script foo, writing your own scripts. It's a good skill to know because you really can do a lot more with GIMP once you know how to write your own scripts. And it's fun to share them with other people and help other people out, uh, so that's always good. So I hope you enjoyed this series of tutorials. Hopefully soon I can get back to making another maybe text effect tutorial or something else other than script foo stuff. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon hopefully.